Saya rasa enam tahun ini merupakan suatu perjalanan yang amat penting bagi saya. Perjalanan yang mempunyai banyak cabaran. Tetapi perjalanan yang amat memuaskan. Puan Halimah Yaakob ialah seorang pelopor dalam pelbagai bidang. Bekas peguam ini merupakan anggota Parlimen Wanita Melayu pertama sejak merdeka. Speaker Parlimen Wanita Pertama. Dan kemudian, Presiden Wanita Pertama Singapura. Saya rasa tidak secara langsung ia memberikan tekanan. Iaitu supaya menentukan bahawa kita melakukan tugas yang terbaik dan sebaik mungkin. Dan saya rasa wanita juga sering uh, diukur dengan standard yang lebih tinggi daripada orang lain mungkin. Ya. Dan ini juga memberikan tekanan bahawa kita harus menunjukkan kebolehan kita. Kalau kita lihat daripada research, Pew Research misalnya, jumlah wanita yang memegang jawatan tinggi amatlah kecil di seluruh dunia. Sama ada dari segi bahagian korporat ataupun diplomatik, iaitu ketua pemerintah ataupun ketua sesebuah negara. Dan ini adalah kerana keadaan tidak begitu menyokong mereka. Jadi jika kita mahu meningkatkan kebolehan wanita untuk duduki kedudukan tinggi dalam pucuk kepimpinan, kita harus menentukan bahawa sekitarannya dapat membolehkan mereka untuk meningkat dalam kerjaya mereka. Presidential election 2017. Result of nominations. Madam Halima Yaakob is the only candidate who has been nominated. I declare Madam Halima Yaakob as a candidate elected to the office of President of the Republic of Singapore. Pilihan Raya Presiden 2017 tidak menyaksikan sebarang pertandingan. Ia juga merupakan pilihan Raya Presiden pertama yang diperuntukkan untuk calon daripada masyarakat Melayu. Sejak Presiden Yusof Ishak yang berkhidmat dari 1965 hingga 1970, Singapura tidak mempunyai seorang Presiden Melayu. Di bawah pindaan perlembagaan, pilihan Raya Presiden akan diperuntuk untuk sesebuah komuniti Sekiranya tiada calon dari komuniti tersebut yang menjadi presiden sejak lima penggal lalu. Kriteria lain juga diperketat. Seorang eksekutif kanan harus menguruskan sebuah syarikat yang mempunyai ekuiti pemegang saham sekurang-kurangnya 500 juta dolar selama sekurang-kurangnya tiga tahun. Rasionalnya ialah, Presiden perlu membuat keputusan berskala besar lagi rumit apabila mempertimbangkan pengeluaran rizab negara. Jawatan kuasa pilihan raya Presiden akhirnya akan memutuskan sama ada calon tersebut memenuhi tuntutan itu. Puan Halimah Yaakob adalah satu-satunya calon yang diberikan sijil kelayakan untuk pilihan raya Presiden 2017. I believe that this is a proud moment for Singapore. This is a proud moment for multiculturalism, multiracialism in our society. I am a president for everyone. Regardless of race, language, religion or creed, I represent everyone. My duty remains only to Singapore and Singaporeans. Rufo Sanja Ta. Di upacara angkat sumpah jawatan, Presiden ke-8 ini menetapkan keutamaannya untuk negara. The presidency is the highest office in our land and is a key institution in our democracy. It unifies our nation by embodying our shared values as a people multiracialism meritocracy and stewardship these values are even more important today guiding us as we find our way forward in a troubled and uncertain world
Presiden Halimah telah meningkatkan kesedaran tentang isu-isu yang dekat di hatinya. Kebajikan pekerja, menyediakan peluang untuk golongan kurang bernasib baik dan perpaduan rakyat. She's very particular about closing the income gaps, about gender equality, and of course about inclusion, especially disability hiring for the persons with disabilities. I know one thing. President Halima has a compassion and empathy for persons with mental illness, and she really feels that they are marginalized and need to be spoken up and advocated for. And so my experience with her really is that loving heart that she has for this group. I think she'll really be known for championing for vulnerable communities. I think that's really where her heart is. Social equality, social integration, and helping people with disabilities. And, and we see that also in many of the events that she attended. Sudah pun terdapat banyak perubahan namun saya rasa tidak mencukupi dari segi apa khidmat yang kita adakan masih uh, perlu dipertingkatkan dan suara mereka harus didengar itu penting Puan Halimah berharap sebagai presiden wanita pertama Singapura beliau telah merintis jalan bagi masyarakat mengubah minda dan lebih menyokong kaum hawa dalam jawatan-jawatan kepimpinan harus ada usaha yang berkesan bersepadu iaitu mengadakan sistem struktur yang membolehkan wanita untuk meningkat dalam kerjaya mereka, dalam politik mereka supaya mereka dapat mendukung ataupun menduduki pucuk kepimpinan yang tinggi. Dan ini tidak akan berlaku secara uh, tanpa usaha. Dan kedua, saya rasa juga perlu kita ada penukaran minda di kalangan masyarakat. Pada Mei 2023, empat bulan sebelum penggal enam tahunnya berakhir, Presiden Halima membuat keputusan yang berat. After very careful consideration, I have decided not to stand for re-election. Presiden Halima menjelaskan mengapa beliau tidak akan bertanding untuk penggal kedua. Well, uh, my primary consideration is that I want to retire. I am retiring. <laughs> Somehow, people find that very difficult to to absorb, to accept. I am retiring because, you know, one of the things you must know about being a holder of a public office, it is entirely all-consuming. You do not have any privacy at all. You're always out in the public arena. Uh, you're always subject to intense scrutiny, and you do lose out many years with the family. And so one of the things that we always say, you know, well, we are going to try to catch up with the family. But then you realize that the family have all grown up, the children have all grown up. They've got their own lives. And uh, it's not so easy to say, I want to retire and I want to catch up. I'm sure many people who retire discovered that. But at least I have grandchildren. So that's one way where I can then refresh, reignite, strengthen the bonding with the family so that's what I intend to do and also to pursue perhaps other interests which I have not been able to do because of a very busy career right up to now. Puan Halima telah mengukir nama selama enam tahun memegang jawatan. Namun, ia diukir melalui ujian getir tepatnya pada 2020. Saya rasa saya tidak boleh lari daripada satu aspek iaitu semua pihak akan mengingati saya sebagai seorang presiden yang menjadi presiden semasa COVID-19 dan di mana kita perlu menggunakan reserve negara kita. Dan uh, itu tentu sekali terteras di fikiran mereka. Pada Januari 2020, penemuan virus jangkitan pernafasan baharu menarik perhatian ramai. Pelbagai langkah ketat dilaksanakan untuk mengekang penularannya. 
Timbalan Perdana Menteri merangkap Menteri Keuangan Heng Sui Kiat membentangkan belanjawan di Parlimen pada 18 Februari 2020. Our immediate concern is to protect you and your families. We will put in every effort to slow down the spread of the virus. Terdapat juga langkah-langkah untuk membantu para pekerja dan peniaga. With these uncertainties, I know Singaporeans are understandably very concerned about the impact on our businesses and jobs. I will introduce two special packages with a total budget of 5.6 billion dollars. Hanya lima minggu kemudian, Encik Heng kembali ke Parlimen untuk membentangkan belanjawan pakej daya tahan dengan langkah sokongan bernilai 48 bilion dolar. Kali ini dengan peringatan Singapura perlu menggunakan rezab masa lalu. This is a landmark package and a necessary response to a unique situation. The government has sought and obtained the president's in principle support to draw up to 17 billion dollars from our past reserves to fund part of the resilience budget. Ini merupakan pengeluaran wang rezab masa lalu yang terbesar ketika itu. Kali terakhir ia dikeluarkan adalah pada 2009 ketika krisis keuangan melanda. Waktu itu, Presiden SR Nathan meluluskan pengeluaran sebanyak 4.9 bilion dolar. Di balik tabir, kesibukan bermula. Kedua-dua pihak, Perdana Menteri dan Kabinet serta Presiden perlu bersetuju sebelum rezab masa lalu boleh digunakan. Presiden menyimak saranan itu dengan Majlis Penasihat Presiden CPA. Presiden dikehendaki berunding dengan majlis ini sebelum melaksanakan kuasa budi bicaranya yang berkaitan dengan isu-isu fiskal. Presiden dan CPA diberi taklimat oleh pelbagai agensi. With regards to the past reserves, I'm very clear in my mind. I'm only authorized to release past reserves for exceptional, very exceptional circumstances. So we establish the reason, the reason that is it, is it truly exceptional? The answer is yes, then we go to the next question. And that is how much of the past reserves should we allow the government to draw down? Now that is a very intense process. The first part is really intense because we have the government, uh, Minister for Finance, Minister for MTI, Minister for Health and all their officials, uh, officers coming to brief us. For us then to ask the questions, the relevant questions, you know. If you say the health situation is critical, what do you mean by that? Hospitals, if you say it's going to be overwhelmed, if you don't have additional facilities, what do you mean by that? So once we've established that, then we go to the second part. And that is the question of how much to draw down that is for the government then to justify. To see, we need this amount, these billions of dollars for these purposes and this program. And the programs are then all itemized. We have our role to protect the reserves and to make sure that the government's request is reasonable. Tan Ching Yi dari Kementerian Keuangan berdepan dengan soalan-soalan sukar yang dikemukakan Presiden dan Majlis Penasihat Presiden. Obviously, the first question of the day was, is this a valid use of past reserves? So, yes or no. Next would be, why this amount? And if we were to use this amount, what is it in aid of? And all the measures that you say you're going to put in place, are they going to be effective to meet the objectives you said you were going to um, fulfil, whether it was to reduce unemployment or to ensure that new entrants to the labour market would not be scarred for life by entering a labour market that was not hiring and they would move from school into unemployment immediately. The question that, that nobody could give a definitive answer to was really how long the crisis was going to last and in what form it would take next. And I think the president and the CPA understood this well. So the first time is always most difficult in an issue that's so uncertain, so complex, and so hard to predict. For me, every meeting, I'm impressed by the sort of questions that she comes up with. She can ask a whole range of questions from technical questions to geopolitical questions, and they're all relevant. 
and it shows the a mastery of the, the subjects that we are briefed on and uh, she's very forthright I mean you know you, you, you know what she's after you know what she wants and I think uh, after a while our ministries both civil servants and politicians know that they have to come prepared when they want to brief the president and the CP. Jangkitan COVID-19 terus melonjak, melepasi seribu orang. Pada 3 April 2020, Singapura mengambil langkah drastik mengekang penularan virus. We will therefore impose significantly stricter measures. This is like a circuit breaker. It will help to reduce the risk of a big outbreak occurring. To further support our people and businesses during this is a Sehari kemudian pada 6 April 2020, Menteri Keuangan mengumumkan belanjawan kesepakatan. 5.1 bilion dolar diperuntukkan bagi menyelamatkan ekonomi Singapura sepanjang pemutus rantaian jangkitan selama sebulan. Langkah ini sekali lagi memerlukan keizinan presiden secara prinsip untuk mengeluarkan tambahan 4 bilion dolar daripada rizab masa lalu. Menjelang pertengahan April, lebih 5,000 kes jangkitan dilaporkan di Singapura dan 11 orang meninggal dunia. Belanjawan keempat dalam empat bulan dibentangkan pada Mei 2020. Sebulan kemudian, Presiden Halimah meluluskan pembiayaan pakej bantuan COVID-19 yang memerlukan lagi 31 bilion dolar dikeluarkan daripada Rizab Singapura. I must say the discussions are so robust, so many meetings. You remember there were five drawdowns from the past reserves. There were 11 budgets throughout my whole, you know, six years of service. So you can imagine there's only six years, right? But there'll be 11 budgets. And those meetings actually don't last just half an hour. They lasted a few hours because we need to ask questions. We need to be satisfied. We wanted more information. We get those information. And even during COVID, you have to bear in mind that this was all done during the COVID period. We had to also uh, take into account the social distancing measures, half of the CPA, and the ministry's officials had to be separated, put in a separate room because we can't be all together. And then we do via Zoom so that everyone still is, is still on the same page, but whilst observing the social distancing measures. The COVID situation is a very complex one. Um, as it is an evolving situation, uh, we had many briefings from various government ministries. When the CPA deliberated on the proposals that were submitted, we looked at it very critically and we looked at the absolute necessity. Well, I have to say that the president, you know, really has this ability to get to the crux of the issues. And um, she really asked the most incisive, most challenging questions. And she comes very well prepared. Okay. I, I like that, you know, if it's needed, she's able to drill down into details, underlying assumptions, projections, etc. So I think her focus is to make sure that whatever we do is very targeted, this gets to the objective that you, you, that you want, want to achieve, and then it is also prudent at the same time. The numbers were much smaller. And um, in fact, some of the money that was put aside was never used. In this case, we used a great deal of it and I think her legacy would be that she was the president that was there and uh, together with government, we, we worked cooperatively and uh, to solve and manage a crisis of such uh, magnitude. Pada Ogos tahun itu, Presiden Halimah merasmikan pembukaan Parlimen. We are starting a new term of government under the shadow of COVID-19. Singapore has been fully engaged in this fight, but the situation continues to unfold. We are injecting almost $100 billion into the economy. These measures have reduced the immediate pain, but things will remain grave for quite some time. Daripada jumlah tersebut, $52 billion daripada rizab masa lalu, jumlah terbesar yang dikeluarkan sejak merdeka, yakni hampir 20% daripada GDP negara. Dalam tempoh tiga tahun, 
Presiden Halima telah meluluskan pengeluaran Rizab masa lalu sebanyak lima kali. Ini termasuk 11 bilion dolar pada 2021 dan lagi 6 bilion dolar pada 2022. Perjuangan memerangi pandemik menyaksikan pengorbanan yang besar khususnya oleh para karyawan penjagaan kesihatan. It's been a truly difficult two years but I think it's one is important that we do it together and we support all our frontline workers. Please excuse me. It's also learning moment for all of us that we were fortunate we had very good governance. And we had a very good reserves base where we could use it in order to take care of the needs of Singaporeans. Sebagai wakil Singapura di Persada Dunia, Presiden Halima mencatat beberapa kemajuan dalam bidang diplomatik. Di mana sahaja saya melawat, saya dalam state visit saya, saya akan mengambil masa untuk berbincang dengan wanita-wanita mereka. Sama ada kita mengadakan jamuan makan bersama ataupun dialog bersama. Tujuan saya adalah untuk memberikan mereka motivasi dan perasaan dan pada masa yang sama memberikan signal kepada pemerintah mereka bahawa ini sesuatu yang penting bagi diri saya sebagai seorang ketua negara Singapura. Lawatan sulung ke luar negara Puan Halima sebagai Presiden ialah pada Oktober 2017, sekitar sebulan setelah mengangkat sumpah jawatan. The first visit to a foreign country I went was to attend the funeral of the late King Bumi Ball. That was in 2017. Pada 2022, setahun sebelum tamat penggal jawatan, Presiden Halimah menghadiri upacara pengumuman mendiang Ratu Elizabeth dan kemudian pertabalan Raja Charles III. Di sela-sela acara tersebut, Presiden Halimah menyentuh tentang hubungan Singapura-Britain yang telah menjangkau dua abad hasil ikatan sejarah. Beliau berkata, kedua negara mahu mencari huraian untuk menangani cabaran bersama seperti perubahan iklim, dan terus mengembangkan peluang ekonomi. Sejak mula memegang jawatan, Presiden Halima telah melawat beberapa negara ASEAN selain menjadi tuan rumah kepada beberapa tetamu kenamaan asing. Pada September 2019, Presiden Halima melawat Filipina bagi memperingati 50 tahun hubungan diplomatik kedua-dua negara. Tiga tahun kemudian, Presiden Halima pula menjadi tuan rumah kepada Presiden Filipina yang baru, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. 46 years ago, Singapore welcomed another distinguished visitor from the Philippines, the late President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. together with his wife. It is our great pleasure to be able to host another President Marcos here this afternoon. Antara mereka yang selalu mendampingi Presiden Halima di luar negara ialah Mejar Bersara Rizwan Abu Bakar, adikong kehormat HADC. Kami selalu berikan tabir yang kami akan berada belakang Presiden. Lah. Kami cuba uruskan ke Presiden perlukan apa-apa bantuan atau perlukan apa pertanyaan, selalu kami di belakang dan cuba uruskan sepuluh mungkin. Lah. Hanya uh, tugasan yang dibentangkan, selalunya kami akan dipahamkan dulu lah apa yang mereka perlukan. Adikong memastikan protokol kepresidenan dipatuhi pada setiap masa. Namun demikian, tugasan Encik Rizwan menjadi kurang berat dengan perwatakan Puan Halima yang tidak banyak ragam. Presiden Halima dia agak berseru, kesedaranaan. Dia tak pernah nampakkan um, haraki atau dia tak pernah menampakkan yang uh, aku ni orang besar, aku tak hormati aku. Bila cara berbual dengan kami sebagai DC secara santai. Pada Oktober 2019, Presiden Halima bertemu Presiden Indonesia Joko Widodo di Universiti Sains Kemasyarakatan Singapura. Presiden Halima hadir sebagai penaung universiti itu. Presiden Widodo pula berada di sana untuk menghadiri upacara konvokasian anak bongsunya. Mereka mengambil peluang mengesahkan hubungan erat yang telah lama terjalin antara kedua-dua negara. 
Setahun kemudian, pada Februari 2020, mereka bertemu lagi, kali ini di Indonesia. Lawatan Presiden Halimah ke Indonesia ini adalah yang pertama oleh Ketua Negara Singapura dalam tempoh 8 tahun. Pada tahun lalu, apabila pandemik mula reda, Presiden Halimah menjadi tuan rumah kepada Yang Di-Pertuan Agong Malaysia, Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah. Namun, isu lain menjadi tumpuan seperti perang di Ukraine. In the face of a complicated geopolitical landscape, it behooves us to continue to strengthen trust and understanding between our two countries and to work together for mutual benefit for our people. Kebanyakan Perdana Menteri Malaysia turut melawat Puan Halimah di istana sepanjang tempoh jawatannya sebagai presiden. Pada Januari 2023, Perdana Menteri Anwar Ibrahim telah mengadakan pertemuan dengan Presiden Halimah. Selepas pertemuan itu, PM Anwar dan PM Lee Hsien Loong menyaksikan pemeteraian tiga perjanjian. Ia bertujuan mengukuhkan kerjasama dua halah dan membantu kedua-dua negara memanfaatkan peluang dalam ekonomi digital dan ekonomi hijau. Lawatan negara pertama Presiden Halimah ke Malaysia menyusul tidak lama kemudian pada Mac 2023. I went on a state visit to Malaysia and for the first time we had a tree planting ceremony. We had even an orchid named after me. They never done it before. So those are things that are quite I mean, it's, it's very touching, you know, because they make the extra effort to try and look at the head of state coming and try to make it comfortable for the head of state. President Halimah juga melawat China sebanyak dua kali. President Xi Jinping invited me on two occasions. One was on the Asian Civilizations Dialogue. He invited me to be speaker. And with regards to that, I also had uh, organized two conferences, I initiated two conferences, International Conference and Cohesive Societies in 2019 and another one in 2022 for the basic reason of uh, ensuring that we continue to talk about social cohesion, not just at the domestic level, but internationally. So that's very aligned to what we were doing also. The second one was, of course, the Beijing Olympics. At both meetings, uh, President Xi, we had very good discussions very warm, very friendly discussions. The relationship between Singapore and China is a very good relationship. And he reinforces that at the meetings that I had with him. And for that, I think it is good that we continue with that. She had actually been invited uh, for a state visit to China. And we had wanted to carry this out in uh, 2020, which would have been the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Unfortunately, COVID happened, and so we had to postpone the visits, and, and the Chinese kept uh, reiterating the invitation for her to, to, to come for the state visit. In the end, we decided that we should uh, respond positively to the invitation by President Xi for her to attend the opening of the Winter Olympics. She was a small number of very carefully selected state leaders to be invited for the opening ceremony. Not only were the atmospherics warm um, and uh, the conversation substantial and fruitful, uh, I think President Halima represented Singapore very well, both by her being present there, having a very good substantive meeting with President Xi Jinping, and showing the breadth and depth of the bilateral relations between the two countries. Selama penggal jawatannya enam tahun, Puan Halimah telah menerima lawatan 50 ketua negara ke Singapura. Well, I think in such a world where is everything is so unsettled, the important message is to really transmit that we are a consistent partner with the the, the countries that I meet, reliable. So that it's important to generate trust and goodwill, because. Relationship with other countries is not built one on one day, one year, but it's consist consistently for many years. The Honourable Kamala Harris, Vice President of the US. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pada Ogos 2021, Presiden Wanita Pertama Singapura telah menerima kunjungan naik Presiden Wanita Pertama Amerika, Kamala Harris. 
Presiden Halimah telah menulis tentang lawatan tersebut dalam satu catatan di Facebook. Beliau berkata, mereka telah mengulangi pentingnya kedudukan strategik Amerika Syarikat di rantau Asia Pasifik dan bagaimana kewujudannya telah menyumbang kepada keamanan, kestabilan dan keselamatan rantau itu. Presiden Halimah juga telah mencatat beberapa sejarah dalam peranan diplomatik. Beliau membuat lawatan negara pertama Singapura ke Arab Saudi pada November 2019. I hope that the fact that they agreed to host me is a big acknowledgement that Saudi Arabia is also looking at ways of how they want to encourage greater women's participation, encouraging women to participate more in the economy, in society and so on. She was warmly received by His Majesty King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, who conferred the Abdul Aziz Medal on President Halima. This is the highest civilian honor that Saudi Arabia can give to any foreign leader. The visit of a President to Saudi Arabia uh, attracted considerable attention among the Saudis and uh, other uh, Arabs in the Gulf states. They were impressed to see Singapore leader, who is um, not just a woman, but also a Muslim, and coming from a secular state like Singapore. I think you must look at the whole Middle East, not just Saudi Arabia. You look at the whole Middle East, the UAE, you look at uh, Qatar. The whole Middle East is transforming itself. Saudi Arabia is also transforming itself and they want to diversify their economies. They want to look at how to have stronger bilateral relations with other countries. And for Singapore's part, that was a good thing that we did because I was the first head of state to visit Saudi Arabia. I was also the first head of state to visit Uzbekistan, to visit uh, Kazakhstan and also to visit Germany and Netherlands. Qatar merupakan negara terakhir yang dikunjungi Presiden Halima pada Jun 2023. Beliau disambut dengan istiadat istimewa oleh Amir Qatar. I will miss all this, the chance to interact with uh, you know world leaders, the chance to interact with uh, Singaporeans based in different parts of the world. Those are very meaningful to me because we still maintain a certain contact with them. The fact that many of them travel from all parts of the country that they, they are living and working in just to meet the President of Singapore is really very warm and touching. It's been a most fulfilling part of my job as well. Kemesraan Presiden Halima dengan segenap lapisan rakyat Singapura disaksikan sendiri oleh Meja Ridwan Abu Bakar. Sebagai adikong kehormat, beliaulah antara orang yang paling dekat dengan Presiden di halayak ramai. Presiden Halima, dia sangat ramah dan bila sangat ramah banyak yang kami dah aturkan seperti mana nak jalan mana nak lalu tapi kerana terlalu ramah dia nak jumpa dengan rakyat atau berjumpa dengan uh, seorang tu dia akan tukar jadi kami pun eh alamak dah tukar jalan kami agak macam uh, gagap lah sebenarnya cabaran tu uh, ialah bila uh, orang nak ambil gambar uh, bila mereka ambil gambar, kadang-kadang mereka terlupa uh, there are certain protocol uh, dengan Presiden. Jadi kadang-kadang mereka terlalu rapat atau mereka nak taruh tangan di atas uh, bahu. Uh, Benda-benda ini kami harus uh, uh, ambil perhatian. Dan kami cuba uh, kalau boleh perbetulkan. Dan kadang-kadang susah mereka nak ambil gambar tapi tak ada orang tolong ambil. Jadi kami tolong ambil dengan gambar. We are starting a new term of government. Di tanah air, Presiden melaksanakan pelbagai peranan istiadat termasuk pembukaan Parlimen dan perbarisan Hari Kebangsaan. Presiden Halimah Yaakob arriving for her very first NDP as head of state. Presiden Halimah telah menjadi inspirasi okay, bukan sahaja uh, kepada pemimpin wanita tetapi kepada seluruh rakyat Singapura di dalam menangani isu uh, pandemik COVID semasa ia melanda seluruh dunia yang mana Singapura telah dapat menangani penularan virus COVID dengan amat berkesan sekali. Perkara yang membuat saya paling terkesan uh, tentang Presiden Halimah Yaakob adalah keisanan beliau dan juga uh, cara beliau menghampiri uh, masyarakat, mendekati masyarakat dengan sepenuh hati.
Salah satu perkara pertama yang diusahakan Presiden Halimah ialah dana pengupayaan sepanjang hayat. Ia menyokong golongan kurang bernasib baik dan keluarga-keluarga bergaji rendah. And part of the fund went to NTUC for the NTUC Lift Up Workers Program, and uh, this NTUC Lift Up Pathfinder Workers Program. Uh, it, it basically means that the low wage workers, together with the family, upskill themselves as a family. You know, and that was very impactful. President Halima has been a workers' president as much as she is a president for all Singaporeans. Dana pengupayaan sepanjang hayat adalah di bawah naungan cabaran presiden. Ia dimulakan pada tahun 2000 oleh Presiden Esther Naden, satu usaha mendekati masyarakat. Setiap tahun, pejabat presiden mengagihkan wang yang terkumpul hasil kempen kumpul dana kepada para penerima yang layak. Presiden Halima adalah penaung kepada lebih 40 badan amal. Ho Gyok Chu dari Human Capital mengimbas kembali peristiwa tahun lalu di istana yang melibatkan golongan kurang upaya. Well, one very visible impact and very touching impact was when she opened up the banquet halls of the istana. The guests received their invitation to istana banquet. They were amazed and they were so delighted that it was inside the Istana House. Presiden Halima juga menerajui sebuah program untuk membantu golongan muda menangani isu kesihatan mental dengan menghubungkan Institut Kesihatan Mental dengan agensi-agensi perkhidmatan sosial. She's done two things. One is that she's talked about mental health and mental illness. The second, of course, is that she's been advocating with persons with mental illness to speak up, to share their stories, because only in those sharing are we more able to accept them. And that's quite important. Pada tahun terakhir, Presiden Halima memegang jawatan. Cabaran Presiden memberi fokus kepada golongan pengasuh dan program pembiayaan untuk mereka. Caregivers often carry with them the invisible load of worrying and caring for their loved ones with special needs. I think apart from giving everyone else a role model, um, her ability and her willingness to give voice to the disadvantage, that is something very impactful because she gives voice to people who are voiceless. Walaupun setelah bersara kelak, Presiden Halimah berazam untuk terus menabur bakti kepada dua golongan khusus ini. Bagi mereka yang menghadapi cabaran mental, saya rasa uh, tugas kita memang banyak di Singapura. Sudah pun terdapat banyak perubahan, namun saya rasa tidak mencukupi dari segi apa khidmat yang kita adakan masih uh, perlu dipertingkatkan. Dan suara mereka harus didengar. Itu penting sebab mereka tidak mempunyai suara. Kedua adalah mereka yang kurang upaya. Saya rasa juga banyak perubahan telah berlaku tapi masih banyak lagi harus kita lakukan. Dari, dari segi pendidikan mereka, dari segi penjagaan mereka, dari segi pekerjaan. Itu penting. Menyentuh tentang masyarakat Melayu Islam, Presiden Halima mau melihat usaha berterusan untuk dua bidang tumpuan. Memang betul kita telah melihat kemajuan. Namun saya rasa kita harus memberikan tekanan kepada dua aspek iaitu pendidikan dan pekerjaan. Pendidikan kerana ia adalah penting. Kalau kita lihat dari segi ekonomi kita, apa saja pekerjaan yang kita kehendaki buat masa ini yang dapat memberikan pendapatan yang baik memerlukan pendidikan. Jadi itu adalah sesuatu yang harus kita terus memberikan tumpuan. Dan kedua, dari segi pekerjaan juga penting sebab kita harus menentukan bahawa kita mempunyai kemahiran. Bagi mereka yang telah memasuki pasaran buruh di Singapura, di masyarakat Melayu, kita harus terus berusaha untuk mendapatkan kemahiran yang lebih baik dan dapat menerimakan panduan manakah sektor-sektor yang sedang berkembang yang kita dapat mendapatkan pekerjaan yang baik, memberikan pendapatan yang baik. Itu adalah penting. Kau 
ekonomi dan agama adalah antara dua bidang sensitif bagi Singapura. Maka itu, Presiden Halimah banyak meluangkan masa menghadiri acara-acara silang agama demi memupuk perpaduan. Among the first thing that she did, she actually invited the council members from the interreligious organisation to the istana for a tea. I think at that point in time, we did realise that for her, interreligious is important and that as president, she was going to set the tone to have that as also part of her priority. The fact that we can come together and exchange in a very informal setting. She sets the tone that even though she is president, but the fact is that she was able to put everyone at ease. Sebagai seorang ketua negara, jadual harian Puan Halima memang padat. Sepanjang enam tahun menjadi presiden, beliau telah menghadiri sekitar 1,400 acara. Ismail Abdul Ghani antara orang utama yang menjaga keperluan Presiden Halima semasa acara-acara penting di istana. Sebab maknanya kita mesti tahu apa event akan ada dekat dalam istana hari ini. Macam ada meeting ke, ada lunch ke, ada dinner ke. Awal lagi dalam tiga jam dulu kita kena set to table. Lepas set table, tengok bilik-bilik itu semua cukup betul sempurna tak? Gai meja, kursi, cushion, cushion cover, langsir, bilik itu semua kita punya kerja nak kena tengok. Encik Ismail sudah berkhidmat sebagai butler kepada kesemua Presiden Singapura bermula dari Encik Yusof Ishak. Bahkan Datuk dan ayahnya juga bertugas sebagai butler semasa zaman penjajahan British. Encik Ismail yang kini berusia 75 tahun dilahirkan di pekarangan istana di kuartus pekerja. Sebelum bersara pada bulan Julai, Encik Ismail memikul satu lagi tanggungjawab penting menjadi tukang masak Presiden Halima. Dia very simple. Dia tak cerewet. Ada pernah saya masak lunch habis ada dessert tau. Dessert saya buat macam apa ni bubur pengat pisang. Tau. Jadi saya makan, saya makan rasa dah manis sangat. Jadi bila habis tu lain saya dapat jumpa Madam Presiden. Saya tanya, Ma'am macam mana tu uh, dessert okey tak? Okey, okay. Ma'am bilang okey. Tapi manis sangat kan? Ma'am? Ya, manis. <laughs> lain kali bila kurangkan gula dia bilang, pasal pisang dah manis, kredit dah manis, saya gula, <laughs> kurangkan gula. Dia tak marah tau, dia cakap. Itu yang tak boleh lupa dia. Dari sekian banyak makanan yang disajikan Encik Ismail, ada satu masakan yang paling serasi dengan selera dan terpaut di hati Puan Halima. Itulah mie siam. Dia makan, dia suka. Satu kali saya buat mie siam, dia suka dibilang dengan dia punya bakli yang serve dia kat dalam ofis kan. Dia bilang mie siam sedap, tapi dia buat, buat dia teringat pada arwah mak dia mak dia mak dia memang masak misiam ginilah dia bilang sama dalam macam resipi saya rasa enam tahun ini merupakan suatu perjalanan yang amat penting bagi saya perjalanan yang mempunyai banyak cabaran tetapi perjalanan yang amat memuaskan kerana saya rasa saya telah berusaha sedaya mungkin untuk melihat bagaimana saya dapat terus memajukan kebajikan rakyat Singapura. Saya ucapkan kepada Presiden kita, semoga kekal menyumbangkan baktinya kepada masyarakat dan juga kekal progresif dan sering mendekatkan diri dengan rakyatnya, insyaAllah. Madam President's uh, term was very important to us. Who work in a disability community because she was a relentless advocate for the work we did. Terima kasih Puan Halima atas segala dedikasi kepada Singapura. Selamat baju berjaya. For me, as a citizen, everything felt so smooth. So I really thank her for that, and I think she's done a really good job.
Kami sangat berterima kasih pada Puan Halima kerana beliau telah membuktikan bahawa seorang Muslimah boleh menjadi ketua dan contoh teladan yang terbaik. Selamat, Selamat Maju Jaya! Jaya.